Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Download it wherever you listen to your podcasts. Football at Four today. Andrew DeCecco from InsideTheBirds.com is here. And, of course, we take a look at the division previews on Thursdays with Andrew. We looked at the AFC East last week. Today, we'll go to the AFC North. The Bengals are your champions, 12-4. and four. Ravens finished 10-7. and seven. The Steelers, 9-8, and eight, another winning season. They ended the season winning four straight games. And even the Browns, 7-10. and 10. It looks like another highly competitive year in the AFC North. How will it all shake out? Let's take a look with Andrew DeCecco from InsideTheBirds.com, who joins me right now for another edition of Football at Four. What's going on, Andrew? How are you, my brother? All good, Mike. How are you, man? All is well, man. Looking forward to uh, this North Division. This is a good one, man. Bengals, your defending champions. Obviously, uh, Joe Burrow has changed the complexion of that team and that city and everything. So let's start with Joe and the Bengals. And how much better do you think Burrow can be? He has gotten that team to a Super Bowl. He got him back to a championship game. Where do you see Burrow now uh, really entering his prime? Yeah, well, first off, from a pure football standpoint, I think the AFC North might be my favorite division in football and certainly one of my favorite divisions to watch play whenever I get a chance. Well, let's start with the Bengals. You mentioned Joe Burrow, and right now he's actually my preseason pick, Mike, to be the MVP of the league. I really like his prospects this year going into this season, and I love what the Bengals have built there. Um, Obviously, you have head coach Zach Taylor. You have their offensive coordinator, Brian Callahan, and D.C. Lou Anaromo. Um, Jamar Chase, to me, is a player who could easily threaten for Offensive Player of the Year, not only this upcoming season, but also for the foreseeable future. Uh, Big T. Higgins guy, Tyler Boyd, their slot receiver. They drafted a receiver named Charlie Jones in the fourth round this past April. I like their offensive line, what they've done there. Obviously, that's been a perpetually uh, problematic area for them, but they've added uh, Orlando Zeus Brown at left tackle. They have uh, Alex Kappa from the formerly of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at right guard. He's a very physical, tenacious player on the inside that I think that they need. Um, J- uh, Jonah Williams is still there at right tackle as well. Irv Smith is going to be their tight end to work the middle of the field for Joe Burrow and give him something of a security blanket. Formerly of the Vikings, he doesn't really have a clean bill of health throughout his career, but uh, you know, hopefully the, the Bengals have something there in him and he's able to turn the corner and stay healthy because that could be a good value and a sneaky upside play if you like fantasy football and then looking at the running back position uh chase brown is a player that i i really earmarked as somebody that i think could be someone who can emerge this season sort of out of out of not seemingly out of nowhere they you know form he's the brother of uh, eagle safety sydney brown they drafted him in the fifth round out of illinois this past april and he's going to work in concert with uh with joe mixon and uh, Travion Williams, who's still there from Texas A&M. So that, that, that's their offense right now, and I, I love what they put together, over, especially along the offensive line. Yeah, well, you mentioned, you know, you got Burrow, uh, Chase is maybe top three wide receiver in the game, and then Higgins and Boyd, you know, you can't find a better two and three around the league than those two guys. It's just a great mix of weapons for Joe Burrow. But, you know, their offensive line in the Super Bowl was a problem. They upgraded it last year, and now it should be even better uh, this season. Let's go to their defense. You know, this is an underrated unit here, and uh, they've got a couple of names that kind of stand out, but I'm kind of interested where you think this defense uh, is at this stage because obviously their offense jumps off the page, but what about their defense? Yeah, I think their defense has gradually improved by leaps and bounds. And let's start with the defensive line. A few of the players that really jump out at me are Sam Hubbard, Trey Hendrickson, who to me is one of the more underrated pass rushers in the league in recent years. Miles Murphy, let's not forget, they drafted him in the first round, the guy from Clemson, the pass rusher from Clemson, who I really liked. So they have three bona fide pass rushers there. Logan Wilson at middle linebacker to me, we, we've mentioned him. He was the Davion Taylor draft, uh, the linebacker from Wyoming, who I just think that he can do so many different things well. He, the defense is, runs through him, and they've kind of put more on his plate each and every season. And I really like the, the direction that his career is headed. Uh, definitely a playmaker there in the middle. And then the secondary, they have some young pieces, particularly in Dax Hill, their strong safety who they draft from the first round in 2022. I like him. He can also play nickel. There's a multitude of ways you can align him and deploy him. Cam Taylor Britt, he was their second round pick. He's a corner, uh, second round pick in 2022, went to Tennessee. I like him as an upside player. I think he has a really high ceiling. 
Uh, DJ Turner, the other corner from uh, from Michigan, they drafted him in the second round this past April. And then Shadobi Awuzie is there, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. So they do have an amalgam of talent there, I think, now uh, in, in a good mix of, of veterans and young players. So um, I really like what they've sort of built on the back end. And, and I don't think we can – I don't think there's a lot – there, there's enough said about the work of uh, Lou Anaruma, their defensive coordinator, and, and what he's done and the imprints – and the impact that he's had there in, in Cincinnati, I think he's got um, a head coaching job in his future uh, probably within the next couple of seasons, I would think. All right, uh, Andrew Checo football for AFC North, a competitive division. Let's go to Baltimore. They were 10-7, and seven, but they played a lot without Lamar Jackson. He's back, but this offense <laughs> is going to look different for Lamar Jackson, it seems like. Lost you there for a second, Mike. Yeah, I was talking about Jackson and him being back in Baltimore, but it seems that this offense is going to be a different offense for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I think it's going to. Um, uh, I think, well, having a healthy running back in J.K. Dobbins is going to make a world of a difference. I think that they didn't really have much of a running game. They lost him early in the season, and they had to rely on the likes of Justice uh, Justice Hill, and uh, Gus Edwards, and Gus Edwards is more of a goal line running back and a short yardage guy, not somebody that you want taking on that many carries. But Lamar, Lamar Jackson, I mean, it's all, it's all going to be dependent on, on his health, right? I mean, this is a guy that's played in 24 games the last two seasons, and um, it, it, they, they've done a lot this offseason to surround him with talent, and now it's going to be, can, is he going to be able to deliver and maximize those weapons? And those weapons that I'm referring to are Odell Beckham, Rashad Bateman, who I thought was going to have a bigger season last year, didn't really materialize. He struggled with injuries. And uh, Zay Flowers, who I really like coming out of the draft this year, I think he's going to be a good guy to get in space and take advantage. And I think they're going to utilize him really early. I think he'll be an impact player for them. The offensive line is Ronnie Stanley. They have Linderbaum, of course, at center. And Morgan Moses at right tackle, he's more of a journeyman, but he's a guy that's logged a ton of snaps in this league. So they do have some experience there on the offensive line for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see how uh, they, you know, this offense looks a little different for Lamar Jackson. Obviously, he's back there, and uh, he's got some weapons now. Beckham, Jay Flowers, as you mentioned. Uh, This is a team that obviously is always known uh, over the years for their defense. So defensively, where are they? Uh, Is this the strength of their team still? In my opinion, yes. I mean, you look at their defensive line. I mean, you have Justin Matabuki as a player. Who I really like coming out of college a couple of years, I guess it was two, three years ago now, uh, Travis Jones, they drafted him out of UConn in, in third round in 2022. I think he's going to take a step forward this year. Edge rusher. I mean, David uh, Ojabo from Michigan. I uh, remember he was hurt last year. He was hurt. I, he hurt himself during his pro day over a year ago. And now I think he's going to be rounding into form. They also have Jason Oway there from Penn State. Uh, linebackers, you have Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a better linebacker duo in the NFL. Um, so I like that. And then the secondary is sort of a uh, a patchwork unit, relatively. I mean, they signed Rocky Seen late in free agency, and they also have Marcus Williams. Marlon Humphrey is one of my favorite corners in football. I don't think he gets enough credit. Very physical player, well rounded game. Uh, and Brandon Stevens is a player who I liked a long time ago at SMU. I thought he did a, a ton of things well. A lot of pass deflections, gets his hand on a lot of football. I would like to see him turn the football over a little bit more, but he's their nickel corner. So, uh, again, kind of we mentioned Cincinnati. I think that uh, the Ravens have a a nice blend of youth and and veteran uh, and veteran leadership there in their secondary. All right. uh, We're talking with Andrew Checo, football at four from InsideTheBirds.com. We do our division previews on Thursday, counting down the Eagles training camp in Right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a team that won four straight to get over 500. And now some people say, all right, uh, they had a nice end to the season, good momentum. Year two for Kenny Pickett. What are your expectations for him? Well, I mean, look, I, I was never a huge Kenny Pickett guy coming out of Pitt. I think that there was a lot of areas of his game that really needed refinement, and I didn't expect him to have early success as a pro passer. Now, all that being said, do I expect him to be better than the quarterback that threw for seven touchdowns, nine interceptions, and sort of guided a, a lethargic offense last season, given the weapons that surrounded him? Yeah, I do. I think he's going to take a leap forward. I don't think it's going to be a monumental one, but enough so where I think that he's going to be able to capably complement what they have on the defensive side. Now, I'm, I'm a really big uh, George Pickens guy. I think that in year two, 
He's going to take a big leap forward. Uh, of course, Deontay Johnson had a down year relative to what he's shown over the past couple of seasons, and I think he's going to rebound nicely. Allen Robinson is a decent – I mean, look, he, he didn't live up to expectations last season uh, with the Rams, but, I mean, being the third receiver in an offense, I think that alleviates a lot of pressure. I think that's better suited to what he where he is at this stage of his career. Um, they drafted Broderick Jones on, on the offensive line, the tackle in the first round this year. They also added Isaac Sayamalu, so there's some – uh, some some beef up front to, I think, help Najee Harris, who really has gotten the volume, but he's never he doesn't have the numbers that would that, that show that the volume that they're giving him. I think he was only averaging three something three point something yards per carry, which is really paltry when you think about it. But um, and and tight end Pat Fryermuth to me is one of the breakout players at the position this year. He's somebody that I have earmarked to be uh, a, 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 a truly a breakout candidate at the position. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to um, Pickett in year two, by the way. Just got married. Kenny Pickett did here recently. Isaac Sayamala, by the way, former Eagle. He's a part of that team as well. Nazi Harris, as you mentioned him. Uh, we'll see what the Pittsburgh offense looked like. But we always know this defense, T.J. Watt, Hayward, uh, Highsmith. Uh, they've got some interesting Fitzpatrick. Remember, he got trained there. They drafted Joey Porter Jr. So what's this uh, You know, big step forward for the Pittsburgh defense? Uh, I think so. I mean, when you really look at what they've built, they added Keanu Benton on the defensive line this year from Wisconsin, a player who was consistently rising up draft boards. They have him to add to Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi. Then their edge rushers, they have the best edge rushers, arguably, in the NFL. And T.J. Watt, who was limited last season with injury, he played just 10 games. But Alex Highsmith, you know, I mean, if anyone's been listening to me over the past four years on this station, you know that I'm a big Alex Highsmith guy. I was a big believer in him coming out of Charlotte. He had 14 and a half sacks last season. Uh, they also added Cole Holcomb, who's more of a pure linebacker, not much, not much of a pass rusher, but they got him from from Washington. They drafted Nick Herbig in the fourth round, Nate's brother, um, and they also added Marcus Golden, who is a veteran pass rusher who's bounced around the league a little bit. So they have a ton of, of, of high octane pass rushers that can they, they can beat you in a number of different ways, and I think it'll alleviate some of the pressure on their secondary who. They're going to put a lot of eggs in their basket in Joey Porter Jr., a young player. They just drafted him in April. Obviously, his father has a longstanding history there in Pittsburgh, Joey Porter. Uh, Levi Wallace will be the other corner there in all likelihood. Make it Fitzpatrick, who you mentioned. Uh, Patrick Peterson is over there, and he'll probably be the third corner at this stage of his career. And Chandon Sullivan is somebody who they brought over who can also challenge for some third or fourth corner snaps there as well. So. I really like what the Steelers have done over the past couple of seasons. They've steadily improved in a number of areas. Yeah, uh, that Pittsburgh team, 9-8 and eight last season. Uh, we'll see if they can be a factor in the ASC North. And then there's the Cleveland Browns. Many people at this time last year were all over the Browns. They loved them. They were hyping them up. Well, 7-10, and 10, not the season they wanted. Now Deshaun Watson gets a full season as the starter. What are the anticipations for this offense with Watson now getting the full season? Well, I mean, you're going to have the, the continuity and the familiarity. So he's had a full year and, and, and some change to really work with some of his uh, his pass catchers and, and, and really build that continuity and cohesiveness there. So he's going to have – the offense is still going to run through Nick Chubb, in my opinion. I think that's going to be a run-first offense regardless. And Nick Chubb is one of the preeminent running backs in the NFL. So he's going to see a ton of volume. Kareem Hunt, remember, is still a free agent. Jerome Ford backs up Nick Chubb. So Nick Chubb is going to get – a ton of volume, and there's not a lot of guys that are going to be there threatening to, to sort of be that goal line vulture there. Um, David Njoku, it seems, seems like he's been around forever. He's entering his seventh season. Um, athletic tight end, formerly at the University of Miami, he's, he's still there. And uh, the receivers, the Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, who has great size, can be a good red zone guy. And Elijah Moore, who they brought over from the Jets, is going to be a really good safety valve as the third receiver there uh, for Deshaun Watson. And when you look at their offensive line, Mike, I mean, Jedrick Wills is a former first-round pick. Uh, Joel Batonio is one of the best guards in football, probably the best guard in football. Um, and they also have Jack Con- Conklin at right tackle, who formerly of the Tennessee Titans. So they do have some some competent pieces there on the offensive line in front of Deshaun Watson. Yeah, that offense is going to be interesting because really Watson's the wild card. I mean, let me, if Watson's the player he was in Houston at his best, What's the ceiling for this team? Well, I, I, I mean, I still think that they could, they could, they'll teeter around 
nine or ten wins if Watson is the player that he was with the Texans. I still think there's some questions there as far as uh, – just as far as, you know, is there enough weaponry around for him to max to be able to maximize his skill set? I don't know that. I, I, I think that they can be, and I think the offensive line is good enough. So I, I mean, I think that there's a, there's a scenario if he's able to round in the form uh, as we know it, I think there's a, there's a, they could easily make a playoff push. All right. Let's go to their defense. Miles Garrett, obviously th- his name, uh, jumps off the page when you talk about this defense, but they've got a lot of talent on that side of the ball. I mean, that's what was so frustrating for Browns fans last year. Been many people thought not only were they going to be a good team, that their defense was going to be really good. So what do we look at uh, that uh, Browns defense? Yeah, Miles Garrett, but also his compliment, uh, Zedarius Smith is a very accomplished pass rusher, uh, as, ma- as many may remember. And their secondary, Denzel Ward is a player who I've, I've liked for a number of seasons, and he has... Uh, a, a really formidable pairing opposite him in Martin Emerson, the second-year corner. Juan Thornhill, of course, comes over from the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. He was uh, a second-round a second round pick back in 2019, that J.J. Ortega-Whiteside draft. Um, and Grant Delpit, the former LSU player, he, he's, uh, he's pairing opposite Juan Thornhill. So I really like what they've done from the safety position as well. Greg Newsom, some may remember the Northwestern corner who was drafted in the first round back in 2021. He's there as well. He'll probably be the third corner, the slot corner there. Um, so, I mean, that, that's something to, uh, I mean, to have a former first round pick as your third corner is, is sort of an embarrassment of riches there. So there, there are some pieces for them to build around. Andrew Checo, football at four, AFC North. I agree with you. This division uh, I mean, you know, we did the East the other day, and you got Buffalo, Miami, and the Jets. I think maybe a little bit higher profile uh, names over there, but this one should be interesting. I love Burrow uh, and the Bengals there. We'll see what you how you stack them up here, but uh, this division uh, always very competitive. And the fact that the Bengals, you know, they were typically the laughing stock of this division with the Browns, have become the class of this division makes it even all the more because Baltimore and Pittsburgh ruled it for years. So. Andrew, how do you have the North going in 2023? Well, no surprise at one, I have the Bengals. And to even take that a step further, I have the Bengals meeting the Eagles in the Super Bowl. That's my preseason pick. Um, my second, my, the se- finishing second, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Third will be the Ravens and fourth to be the Browns. And some may say, "Why? Well, how do you have the Ravens at three? Well, you look at the health of Lamar Jackson, you look at uh, how inept they've looked when and they've had to be guided by Tyler Huntley and how, how instrumental Lamar Jackson is to how that team functions. And when you see a player who's only been available for 12 games over the past, each, each of the past two seasons, I, I mean, I, I don't know that, uh, I mean, there's enough data there to suggest that he, he might not be available for a full slate of games. So I, I think that in a closely contested division like that, I don't think that I have him. I, I could have him at two. All right. That's interesting. Baltimore three, Cleveland four. And that one can turn in any direction. As you mentioned, you know, Watson, he's a wild card. That could make them a much better team than people think. And you got Pittsburgh seemingly uh, good every single year with Baltimore. And, of course, the defending AFC champions two years ago in the Bengals. They got back to the championship game last year. Uh, Do they have another Ronald them, it's no reason to think they don't. That AFC North should be a good one. We broke it down for you here on Football at Four with Andrew DeCecco. He'll be back next week. We'll look at the AFC South, and that'll take us all the way into Eagles training camp. So stick around for our Football at Four division previews with Andrew DeCecco from InsideTheBirds.com. Andrew, appreciate it, man. Happy Fourth to you. Yeah, man, likewise. Take care.